Introducing the Nexus 360, Diderio's first rechargeable omnidirectional tuner. Visible at every turn, from any angle, no matter where you wind up. Nexus 360, built for your next stage. Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm hanging out at the Nashville's Cannery Ballroom with Wolf Alice guitarist Joff. Joff, how are you doing? I'm good. Very happy to be here. Yes, we're happy to have you. We talked a few years ago upstairs. You're downstairs. You've graduated to a bigger room. So congratulations. Also, congrats on the new record, Blue Weekend. That just came out over the summer. But maybe a bigger congrats, considering our audience and what we're here to do. This guitar you built during quarantine. A yep. quarantine project. Yep, this was my lockdown project came back from the studio after recording. I had this bit of mahogany and it was under the bed for like five years and I'm like, I'm gonna make a guitar one day. One day I'm so gonna do it. So you knew this was coming? I knew it was coming. You're I knew it was coming. Wood. I know, but never had, never had the time to do it. And I was kind of sitting the last day in the studio just going, what am I gonna do? Cause I'm rubbish at kind of sitting, doing yeah. nothing. So I went, okay, I'm gonna buy some tools. I'm gonna go home. I'm just gonna make like the body. Go do the body, buy some parts, buy a neck, you know do a little semi-parts caster thing um, and ended up making the body fairly quickly and then going, you know, I'll buy some other wood, buy a bit of maple, flamed bit of, this is actually a flamed bit of torrified maple and this is just a very, very dark piece of rosewood and went, you know, why not? Let's give it a go. And just it kind of snowballed. Yeah. How yeah. long do you think the project took you? About 10 months. Wow. About 10 months. Yeah. I'm sure there's some start and stops and breaks and no, frustrations. Of course. And you know, a lot of it was done with, you know, pretty cheap tools. Um, just like even radiusing the fretboard took, I want to say like about five hours. Wow. A tiny little block, just made a little jig on the balcony, just kind of going away, measuring, going away, measuring, you know. And in, you know, in lockdown, I kind of needed, you know, we all needed that kind of escape, yeah. didn't we? So this was that and just kind of taking real care of each, each small bit and part of the process. Now you went kind of glossed over everything is the, is the project, but let's dive in a little deeper because mm -hmm. some of these, obviously it's a, a, a Jaguar bass guitar, yep. but what are some of the things that you've done to it? I can tell, I'm sure the camera's picking it up, a little extra carving, all that. So talk to us about how this guitar unfolded to be kind of your number one now. Yeah, so. And what you put into it to make it that. So this was kind of trying to remedy some of the issues that I had with the Jaguar. And I love Jaguars, you know, they're my main guitar. It's okay. what I've played forever and ever. I've played that one for the last 10 years, you know. Um, but this was, yeah, a shot of kind of remedying some of the things and kind of making something that was a bit bespoke for myself. So all the kind of contouring was done to my own body. I kind of got the block of wood and went and kind of, here is my rib profile and here's my yeah. hip. Here is where my arm naturally sits on the guitar. So we carved that out. It's a longer scale length, so a Jaguar is 24 inches, I believe. Yep. Um, and this is 24 and three quarters, so like which I believe is a Gibson. Yep. Which makes kind of playing down here a little bit easier, which is nice. It's a Jazzmaster body, which is just a tiny little bit bigger. Okay. Um, yeah, and then just stuff like the neck profile is absolutely Very, tiny. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's absolutely tiny. I mean, even, you know, Fender guitars that, you know, say they're slim necks, you know, they're not, they're not you know, they they're not that thin. slim. That's RG series thin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's oh. kind of like, I wanted a kind of Ibanez kind of shredder neck. Mm. So um, it's along those lines. It's kind of pretty thin up here. Now, three quarters um, of an inch isn't that big of a difference, you know, oh, in the it, scheme of things, but what, what does it do for you that you oh, find pleasing? Completely opens up this bit of the fretboard, especially doing chords down here, because there's one song we got on the new record called Delicious Things, where I'm doing a lot of chord stuff down there. And on that, I just can't play it. My mm. fingers are too big, and just trying to do any of that kind of stuff down just doesn't work at all. But with this... Opens up. Yeah, but without having it that full scale length, which then kind of I'm going, ah, I don't know where I am. Yeah. Because I've always played the shorter ones, so... Yeah. And there's certain... Because I've got quite big hands as well. I'm used to kind of doing shapes that I can't do, yeah, on a, on a Strat or a Jazzmaster or something like that. Now, did that change or impact what strings you were using, the, the extra scale length compared um, to the other? 
this older, you know, the Jag, the 62 reissue? We've gone for, we're on heavy bottoms, so we're kind of heavy bottoms. It's a kind of a hybrid pack. I can't remember what they are. There we go. Thank you, sir. So these are Ernie Balls. There you go, product so placement. Exactly. Thank you, Ernie Ball. We love you. Um, skinny top, heavy bottom. So okay. they're kind of a hybrid. Um, because I'm a little bit reticent to put really heavy strings on here because of how slim the neck is. Yeah. Yeah. The tension. Yeah, no, exactly. So thank you, Ernie Ball. <laughs> now, pickups. <laughs> I you, assume you didn't wind them, but. So no, 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 okay. no. All the hardware, you know. Okay. All the hard, you know. Let this the pros is. Do that. This is stock. You know, this is stock Fender. This is mastery. Mm -hmm. These are Lollers. This was actually this is just a kill switch because I took out the rhythm circuit because yeah. I never used it, but I used it as a um, as a kill switch. So I've actually stole this off the Troy Van Leeuwen oh. guitar because yeah, I, I had a tiny one in there for a little bit, and it would just break. So this is, I mean, it's incredible. And that guitar is incredible. Yeah. I have one at home without one of these in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you definitely do. I know, yeah, yeah. So I need to find, I need to find a, you know, I need to find this and put it, put it in that one properly. And, then, um, and what, a just standard kind of procedure down here with that, those sliders? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So this is... Wiring and stuff? That's that one, that's that one. This is a, a high pass. Okay. Yeah. And do you ever use that or is that just kind of... There? Oh, all the time. Oh. Oh yeah, God yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. And what kind of application? Um, it depends on the sound. I mean, you know, essentially it just thins it out, so it kind of it creates somewhat of a middle space between these two. But if jags you know can I mean. be kind of thin, anyways. Like fenders are known to be like thin treble instruments. Yeah, especially these. But it's boys. all it's all compensated, I think, between what you're doing on the floor with the pedals and the amps. You know, it's a multivariate. Because I mean, you can see on that one. I mean, to compensate you know, that twin has got its base set on ten. Yeah, yeah, that does it. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> so it's little little things like that which can kind of make, which can make it sound a bit more guitar-y. Now, what would you say before we move on to these other instruments is was like the the biggest re uh, revelation or frustration that you didn't see coming through the process? What was the biggest revelation? Or maybe you know because you've been the guitar player for so long, now you've become the luthier. Yeah. So like, you know, now you've well. seen both sides. <laughs> I've made <laughs> a guitar. guitar. I wouldn't say I'm a luthier, but... Um, You're trying. I don't know. I think... No surprises along the way? Lots of surprises. Lots of just... I think... Yeah, I, I'm struggling to think of anything, you know, earth shattering yeah. other than just... It's, it's been amazing to build something with the knowledge that it will be used as a tool and therefore just stuff like the contouring, be able to do something that's completely bespoke. Um, and you know, the neck wasn't right until it felt right in my hand. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and it took forever and there was loads of, there was loads of, t you know, like a lot of this is wood fill <laughs> through, you know, <laughs> through little issues that I had along the way. But you know, to be honest, they're quite, electric guitars, they're pretty crude instruments. Yeah. And you know, working with wood, if you know, if you, if you make a hole or if you kind of bungle something up, you know, there's nothing that a bit of wood dust and glue won't kind of, <laughs> won't kind of sort you out with, really. And then, like you're saying too, and then you're going through the pickup, so it's, it, you know, it's not like an acoustic instrument where it, there's like dynamics and science happening with the top and the bracing. This is just wood and yeah. electronics. No, exactly. I think one of the things we were really surprised of is just increasing the scale length, is just how much is how much more resonant it was than a smaller scale. Because hmm. that's one of the things that's great about the Jags, but sometimes is not what you want. They can be a bit plinky plonky. Yeah. Because the short scale length, it hasn't got that tension to really kind of, you know, keep uh, the string resonating. So yeah, so that was interesting. Yeah, do you feel like there's not necessarily dead spots? Because again, that's kind of associated maybe with acoustics or a bass. But I know that, I think in previous interviews, or yeah, you would have to, compensate for the strings maybe ringing out in a more equal manner yeah. from you know, well, top I think, to bottom? I think that's maybe where I got into a lot of effects, in, well, certain effects, I think. You know, a lot of delays, a lot of reverbs and all that kind of stuff because I was playing a guitar that didn't have a lot of sustain. So there were different things that, you know, different ways in making it sustain or notes last longer, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, Joff, I think it's time to reintroduce the crowd to uh, 
The old 62. Yep, so this is the guitar. I bought this in Wood Green, London, uh, with my student loan. Bought it offline, right? Like a, the eBay version, or the UK so e version? So eBay, yeah, so it's like Craigslist yeah, in yeah. the UK. Um, and it was clean, completely clean off some guy who bought it in America, didn't have a use for it. Um, I don't know why I bought it, to be honest. Really? I remember, I remember seeing a Jaguar in a guitar shop when I was a kid and going, that's an ugly looking guitar. But I think I, I think I was, you know, I think I'd started listening maybe to, as you do, you know, when you're 18, 19, to Sonic Youth and yeah. Dinosaur Jr. and, you know, my bloody Valentine and stuff. I think I got it wrong because all those guys really play jazz, jazz masters. masters. <laughs> but I saw it and went, oh, yeah, why not? Let's, let's do that. And you I kind of fell in love with the kind of eccentric, uh, the kind of eccentric bits of it, you know, you've got these big things that you can play behind the bridge, you know, this a whammy system which is completely unique to Jaguars and Jazz yeah. Masters um, and all these bizarre switches, all the chrome, it was, you know, it's, they're weird instruments, they're now, weird guitars. Do these ones have the Lawlers as well? Yeah, okay. ev everything, everything has, well, these two do, yeah, okay. and the spare, yeah, the kind of, as well, compensating for that kind of thinness, they're a lot, a lot chunkier than your kind of stock Jaguar pickup. Now, are you using this on specific songs or, you know, er earlier material or is this a backup or how, how are you using this and rotating between the guitars that we're seeing on stage? Yeah, I mean, the plan was just to kind of have it as the backup. But like all guitars, even, you know, the same models, there'll be certain different bit, different kind of attributes that they have. And this is kind of turning into more of a rock guitar. Hmm. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know why it's all the same electrics. Obviously, it's different woods. Um, but this takes gain in the kind of heavier stuff a lot better. So if you're talking overdrive kind of stuff, this is yeah, like Moaning Lisa Smile, um, Giant Peach. Now going back to that one, you said it's the body's mahogany. Yeah. Have you noticed it being darker than this one? Because typically ma mahogany can be a darker wood than what Fender uses for their. Yeah, their I don't know what's in this. If I had a guess, it'd probably be maybe it's, ash or alder. Yeah, may maybe it's a lighter thing there, isn't it? So yeah. maybe it's, it's definitely not like swamp ash. It's still quite heavy, although, yeah. you know, you've got all the hardware and switches. Um, yeah, it's interesting. This is, a, this is actually a lot brighter. Hmm. That's actually a lot darker. Oh. Yeah. Probably years of soaking sweat into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's dulled tainted its sound. Dulled the tone somewhat. Now we got another one over here. Yeah. Uh, this is a unique Strat. Yep, so this is the Ed O'Brien signature. Fender kindly um, sorted us out with a couple of new guitars um, for this tour because we needed some new stuff. Um, and this has been great fun to play with. Really, really great fun. Now that is, as you spoke earlier as a tool, this is a unique tool. How are you yeah, using it so far? Because it very has a lot much going so. on. Do you know what? I'm actually using this, not using it to its full potential at the moment. And I'm kind of just using it as a strap. But I asked for it for Fender because it's it's got the special stuff. So it's got the, is it the Fernandez, Fernandez sustainer pickup yeah. in. Off shot, you have Adam Cummings who helped work with Ed O'Brien to actually make this, um, who's working with us at the moment. Um, and it's a fantastic guitar. I mean, it's a brilliant Strat in its own right, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's got, so it's got this sustainer pickup. Mm -hmm. So when you flick these switches, it essentially is like having uh, what are those little... Oh, the Ebo. The Ebo. It's like yeah. having six Ebos going all at once. So you can just, you, you know, fret stuff that. and it just keeps on going and going and going and going. So, yeah, I mean, I've literally just scratched the surface of what this can do. Um, yeah, and it's a great sounding instrument. Nice. And it, again, with the relation to the 62 and the home build, is this getting used for any specific songs or throughout the set? Or is it kind of just how you're feeling that day? Uh, it's... For specific songs, yeah, specific songs. Uh, well, I think I'm playing it for Lipstick on the Glass at the moment. It's got a really lovely clean sound, um, and that's doing a lot of finger picking. So that's sounding really nice. I know on the yeah. new record, uh, and maybe this is where the, the sustaining, I don't know if it's a Staniac or sustainer, but Fernandez pickup in the neck would come in handy. I know that you've incorporated some slide on the new record. You know, yeah. I don't know if you're playing it live yeah. to make up for those parts in the record, or that could be a thing because like it has well, that was, glide. Yeah, no, I was playing, I, I bought a lovely slide. I can't remember the name of the brand. I'll find out and you can maybe okay, post we'll that. But it it's, a it's a beautiful, beautifully built slide. Um, and yeah, I was playing around with it with the slide and the sustain and with the volume pedal and it was, yeah, real fun, real fun. 
So on, on stage, like on tour here, are you playing those slide parts or is that just something for the record? I'm not at the moment. Gotcha. I'm not, because unfortunately those, yeah, I haven't quite worked out how to do it yet. Because those slide parts come in between pitches, bits that are, you know, very, very four finger chordy kind of yeah. stuff. So I'm sure, I'm sure there's a way. I'm it's sure less a way. crucial than maybe what you have to be playing. Yeah, to yeah, carry yeah. The song. I, haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. Well, I will do. Maybe if you have some more hands, you could do it. I know, it. <laughs> right. That's a good solution. Some more hands. Oh, wow. Here we go. Look so at that. The slide is game. The rock slide. Ah. Um, Ariel Posen. He's a signature Canadian slide. magnificent slide and player. And absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So well built. A little kind of cut out hole, rounded bottom, which I've never seen before. Yeah. He well co-designed done, that with the company. Yeah. Good job, Adam. <laughs> and the last one, Mr. Jag himself, uh, Johnny Marr. Yep. How are you uh, incorporating this one? So this... Has it even come out of the box yet? Because it is pretty... Yeah, no, I mean, it's got a oh, tiny go. little thing. One. I mean, we've only just start, we've, we've only just begun, like the, car <laughs> like the carpenters. Um, so we're using this at the moment for how can I make it okay? Um, because it's got a really unique... These are the bare knuckle pickups mm. and the kind of all the stuff that's hidden behind the hood. It's almost kind of got a strap quality to it. Hmm. Um, it's a really interesting clean sound that is nowhere near or nowhere comparable to this clean sound on this guitar. It's a lot kind of paddier. It's almost got more of a kind of 80s vibe, which kind of makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I've got a guitar at home, which is based on the Johnny Marr, which has the Johnny Marr pickups, but it's black, black headstock. Mm. Uh, block and bound um, but yeah I, I think this is one of the best guitars being made at the moment it's incredible just out of the box and the attention to detail I think is amazing even like even such like tiny things like the edges of the fretboard are kind of rounded over yeah. it feels like an instrument that's already been played um, yeah I mean you know, I know he took a long time doing it but it is yeah I don't it's, imagine he put a, his name on something that yeah is half-assed. So. No, no. It's be, it is really it really is a very special guitar. You kind of get some artist stuff and you're like, it's you know it's a guitar with a signature on. But yeah. this is yeah something really special, something really special. Now I feel like that might just be it for guitars. I know that you had mentioned off camera that you play bass on one song. It's just a standard P bass. Yeah, there's just a standard P bass down there that I'm playing for a song called No Hard Feelings, okay. which is like a kind of like a picking chordal thing that's played on the bass. All right. Um, you've got a Fender acoustic, a Paramount acoustic. Which is, um, you know, fitting because you and Ellie started out as a, an acoustic duo and, uh, you know, we'll get into the pedals and you heard in the intro, you guys are nothing but acoustic, or anything but acoustic, I should say. Yeah. Now, you've become quite, yeah, you know, no, your own skin as electric guitarist. Yeah, I mean, we've leaned, we've leaned on that a lot, though, in the last record. There's a lot of sounds that are kind of layered up acoustic instruments. There's loads of stuff in the studio. Yeah. There's loads of 12 strings and banjos. and stuff. Yeah, um, you know, like, there was, like, resonator guitars. Mm and tenor resonator guitars and loads of weird instruments that we kind of incorporated. And it was really nice to kind of get back there. And there's a song on the record called Safe From Heartbreak that we're mm. playing at the moment, which is all finger picking. So it's nice to get back to, a, Where you get back to that stuff. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly, come full circle. Well, let's move on to amps, which I'm kind of blocking here, but I'll cool. move to the side. Before when we talked, you had a, kind of a Fender Vox, you know, cross Atlantic, transatlantic setup. Yep. Now you're fully Fender. Yep. Talk to me about kind of saying goodbye to the Vox, at least on stateside shows. Um, yeah, we, well, we said goodbye to the Voxes prior worldwide. I won okay. a couple of, at the end of the first record. Um, and the Voxes are great and they do the Vox thing, but it's not necessarily what I really needed. Um, and for me, the twins are just the ultimate blank canvas. You know, they can, huge amounts of headroom, beautiful, big, clean sounds. And it's just all about having that big sheet of paper that you can then, you know, paint on. Yeah. Just throw mm. gobs of colors at, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. Is there anything we should know about this? Uh, any different speakers in here? Is it kind of stock? No, Twin these, reverb these, recipe? Yeah, no, these are stock. I think, I, I don't know, because these are reissues. I don't know how similar they really are yeah. to the proper old black faces that can be a little bit thinner, because these yeah. are really full. 
Um, and at home, I actually use a, one of them is a 70s master volume silver face. Okay. And that's really lovely having that kind of balance of black and silver face. Um, they kind of do different things. So at the moment we've got, you know, this is set up a little bit more trebly, this is a little bit more bassy. Um, yeah, just love having that volume shoot behind you. It's yeah. great. I've got none of it in any monitoring at all. Okay. Yeah. And, th and this last question before we head to the pedal board and start hearing it is, I imagine these are both going on, like you said, but they're not in stereo. It's just double mono? Yeah, double mono. Okay. Double mono. Our sound man is an old school Johnny Haskett. And he mainly does. In the pans? Yeah. Not well. I think he, he's very minimal with his panning. Okay. He's kind of really he's he's kind of old school in that approach, but it's just all muscle. And he finds that doing stuff. You know, if if stereo is like that, yeah. he's like, Pfft, I Got think, it. yeah. Well, Joff, this is where uh, you're gonna start to bring things to life on that pedal board that's been blinking at me all day. So <laughs> let's hear him. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Joff, we are at your space station sized pedal board, which is awesome because I love this shit, man. So tell me about <laughs> everything that's going on and like, you know, blinking lights. There's a lot of sounds on here. So how are you using everything? Yeah, the Death, the death Star. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, as kind of ridiculous as this sounds, kind of the, the concept with the board was trying to get as much functionality out of something that can also get on a plane and that you know, I can also have on the floor. I'm not interested in having all the effects off stage and kind of away. I'm a control freak. I like to see what's going on. I like yeah. to be able to change things on the fly. That thing could probably fly the plane, my friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is right on the limit, right on the <laughs> limit. And it was made, it was built by a very good friend of mine called um, Tag. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram on The Guitar Butler. Ooh, that's Check a good him name. out. I know, right. He's a, he's a real <laughs> funny guy. He's great. Uh, really talented, though. So. So yeah, I mean, everything is more or less plumbed into the RJM um, PCB, PBC, I think. And everything PBC. you kind of showed us off camera before we started rolling, everything's patched in for each song, and each song has different kind of, I guess, yeah. patches? Or yeah, so I mean, so the setup settings. is that you have songs. Inside a song, you have presets. There you go. And each preset can send CC change messages, turn on different loops. Um, yeah, do a bunch of different stuff. Now, how much of that programming you did, or how much did uh, the guitar butler do? Oh, I'm not letting the guitar butler do any of that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, yeah, no, no, this is, you know, all programmed, all programmed by me. And, so and it's kind of, you know, it's as ridiculous, again, as it sounds, you know, we use a lot of different guitar sounds on the records. Absolutely. You know, tons of different pedals, tons of different amps. So this is trying to make something that is, can replicate to a certain extent what's going on on the record. So the live setup has to be in some cases a compromise. And that, I know that doesn't look like a compromise, mm. but in, <laughs> in, in our, our world it is, it is, yeah. Now, I think maybe a, a spot to start and kind of dive in and get some sounds going is the last time you heard a color sound fuzz, you have the big muff, which you know yeah. the last one was like a tone better style. This is obviously a muff. Mm -hmm. So what made the change there? Um, I think it was recording the second album with JMJ. Uh, he had one of them, oh. and it's you know I mean to a certain extent I might get berated for this, but fuzzes are uh, there's you know not that much of a difference for the amount of fuzzes there are out available. I yeah. think, um, and I th the big muff think especially the Russian one for me it ticks all the boxes it's gritty it's thick um, yeah it's sounds big and dirty it's a fuzz box yeah it's here can yeah. you hear it maybe let's yeah. give us just your clean palette and then bring, right. bring the fuzz all right we're gonna have to we're gonna have to turn some stuff off turn off the lights yeah I know right so clean so clean sound Yep, two twins, and then we've got a fuzz. Oof. Yeah. 
And that's, so this is in the same loop. We have the Wampler Tumulus. And that's like a kind of a clon clone? So it's, yeah, it's a clone clone. Okay. But it does a really interesting thing. So a lot of times fuzz pedals will remove low mid, will rem remove a lot of punch and will kind of retain a lot of that sizzle in the high end, but you'll kind of lose a lot of that body. And for whatever reason, the kind of low drive mid boosts, you put them before a fuzz, kind of throws a bit of that back in. So the big muff without kind of goes with the Wampler Tumulus in. A lot more mid, low frequency, beefy. Mm -hmm. Spiky highs, yeah, you can definitely hear the AB. I don't know if it comes through on the recording, but as someone that's feeling it, it definitely you, you, it feels a different fre frequency hitting my back. No, for sure. No, definitely. Yeah, it kind of makes it HD somehow. Yeah, yeah. and like a full, a full thing. Now, Joff, I know that a lot of your sounds are dependent on multiple pedals and multiple kind of uh, settings. And you obviously have like some high powered stuff here with the Strime and the Line 6. Mm -hmm. I think from here, maybe just Show us some of your key sounds and, and then break down what we're hearing in terms of like what's getting used. Okay. Um, just because we're here, let's maybe go. So the last man on earth, I've kind of got a sound going at the moment, which is trying to replicate a string section because we don't have a string section. There's a bit of this sound on the record, but for live it was kind of the idea to make something that moves in the same way. So I don't know, here's a little bit of so. So what we have going on here, what do we have going on here? So we've got the King of Tone, uh, clean boost, any, cle well, most, most sounds will have the King of Tone on as a kind of bass level. Okay. The compressor and the King of Tone, either dirty or clean, clean in this, in this case. And then we have the HX effects on, doing a sweep echo, which is kind of replicating the line six the DL4? Yeah, which yeah. is like the closest pedal to my heart, but unfortunately I needed more functionality like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So, you know, that's... Is it? Which is kind of a delay with phased repeats. It's very unique. It's got its own thing going for it. What, have, what else have we got in here? We've got a delay. Fairly standard delay. And then we've got a big Strymon octave reverb. Now, which, as you can sound, is doing a lot of the legwork, really. Well, in that I was going to say, where's that coming? Is it coming from the, the big sky, or is that coming from the HX? So that's of the stomp? so that's coming from the big sky. Okay. However, with this sound as well, so something we've got going on at the moment is output two of the RJM. I've had set up. Um, so the outputs are all programmable, so in different presets you can have the output on or off. So when I want it on, and I want to create something that is maybe even more dreamy or that moves in a different way to the set sound, I can have that going out of output B through the HX Stomp, which I think is a fantastic pedal. I think both of these Line 6 pedals are unbelievable in what they can do. Um, Rel uh, relatively affordable considering what you, you so get out of it. So affordable, yeah. I think they're absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so in this case, we've also got, you might not be able to hear it because it's not mic'd up, but... Uh, so all of those sounds are then coming through into the HX Stomp, but different timed delays, more sweep delays as well. So you've got this that moves in one way and you've got that that moves in another way. And because it's DI, it's a... Um, a thinner signal, so it kind of floats around on top and creates a kind of interesting mesh kind of thing. I know uh, you've talked about in the last one we did, other interviews, is, and I just know from hearing you and seeing you play is that you like a lot of movement in, in your yeah. notes. Whether it's clean or dirty, there's always some type of swoosh or whoosh or yeah. you know, square wave this or, you know, triangle something. No, exactly. I mean, I'd, I mean, you know, these effects are meant to be for me, anyway, I think you, you, 
they can do such crazy things and to not do crazy things with things that can do crazy things it seems it seems odd and I've always loved guitar players that just you know just turn everything up and see what happens you know whether it's like you know like Tom Morello with a wah you know with a whammy pedal the amount of crazy sounds you can get out of that or yeah. if you're talking about Kevin Shields and or you know Josh Hayward from the horrors you know it's just people that are making guitars do weird stuff because we've heard the blues lick do you know what I mean we've heard that a million times before it's, yeah. you know no diss to anyone that's into that you know that's that's your thing but for me it's all about you know how do we push things forward how do we make things sound it keeps different. it fresh exactly yeah inspiring in and a way. the tech at the moment is so amazing and some of these bits like you say you know it's the kind of affordable yeah you know they're not completely out of out of the reach yeah so what should we hear next i know you kind of well, that was like a shimmer beautiful thing what what do you have like a next step up on that uh let's go to let's do some let's do smile smile would be fun that's a great fuzz tone so in smile we have poor pardon the clicks in smile we have so we've got the compressor king of tone on clean as always the Wampler, the Big Muff, and then we're using the HX effects to, we've got some EQs in there um, and some gates. And that's the brilliant thing about the HX effects. If you've got it set up in stomp, well, in conjunction with this in uh, preset song kind of mode, each time you bank up, there's, a, there's a possible six pedals different sounds that you can kind of have at your feet you can turn on or off it's yeah it's it's really changed the game for me completely so this is this is what that sounds like then yeah that that starts the the record i know it probably starts the show with the bang <laughs> it does, yeah, it does, it does. It's a real fun one to play, yeah. It's a really, really fun one to play. And now, then there, just I heard to... octave as well, right? Yes, so you are right, you are right, yeah. So there's the Moo in there as well. Okay, um, that took place of, I know that you're a big fan of the, the Pog, the Hog. Yeah I, love, yeah, I love those pedals. I think they're absolutely fantastic. To be honest, I think the Moo, in terms of a single unit that just does octaves, is one of the best I've Played. And it's super small. That's super small, really cheap. Um, and as with the compressor, yeah, I think Moo are absolutely fantastic. And some people kind of turn their nose up and, you know, that's a whatever, a $50 pedal or whatever. Yeah. They're brilliant. They make so much good stuff, so much really good stuff. And it's on, you know, it's on there because it's great. And it's also small. Yeah, and some, sometimes you got to let your ears do the thinking and not so much your eyes in terms of like, well, the MSRP in a pedal or, yeah, or yeah, the country no, exactly. of origin. So. Yeah, if it's good, if it's good, it's good. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's keep moving. I, I know there's a lot of sounds lurking on here, so maybe walk through a few more key sounds. I don't know. Well, this, this is the thing with this. It's not really a case of key sounds. Everything has its own kind of, everything definitely has its own vibe um, and is set up. There's not a sound that's kind of repeated, if you know what I mean. Yeah. There's not, this is my clean sound with a delay. Yeah. It's like, this is the intro sound to delicious, to delicious things. You know, here Which, is... That's a delightful sound. You know, here is, here is the tone for Formidable Call. Cool. Um, yeah, there's nothing... I don't believe there's anything in here that's r repeated at any point. Um, we've got a lot of bangs at the moment. <laughs> we've, got some, we've got some buffer issues that we'll uh, get through. Yeah, this through. is known to be a noisy room too. Yeah, yeah, with the lights and stuff. But... It's like the breakdown sound in Bros, but there's some great stuff coming out of the HX. Um, effect, HX stomp there, which is kind of this yeah, how are pitched, you up, pitched up reverb okay. delay kind of job. Uh, and that's coming through the monitors. And that's going straight through a DI, well, hopefully out of front, but also in this <laughs> monitor. Um,
So you've got more of a kind of standard-y, guitar-y, washy sound, and then that that doesn't, for me, doesn't sound anything like a guitar. It sounds no. like a, it I sounds don't know. Heavenly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving purgatory, Mom. <laughs> now, I see uh, some Empress effects as well. So how are those getting incorporated to the thing? So, the thing being, you know, your overall sound and yeah, so pedal playground. These are mostly used as expression effects. Okay. Um, I think Empress make the best mod pedals. I'm including tremolo in that as well. I use their multi-drive as well, which is really good. It's kind of metal sound. But these ones are all kind of turned off and on um, for certain, just for certain moments. Um, so in Smile, there's a big noisy section, which uses that same kind of octave fuzz sound. But then we go. And if we wanted to, you know, we could also go down to the tremolo and go. Kind of almost a Johnny Marr chop. Yeah. Super chop. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but they go, to, they go to the absolute extreme, the Empress pedals. Um, and that's what I really, 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 really love about them. They're just, yeah, fantastic. Even like the, f I was playing with this sound the other day that was just, it just, if we get a kind of clean-ish sound going on. What are we saying? Loop 8. This is one of my favourite at the moment. It's got a kind of random wave thing. Discombobulated now, but is yeah, this that's what it's meant to do? <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, through a set, Joff, are you finding yourself on the floor doing kind of what you did there with the Empress, or is that you kind of have your sounds dialed in and you don't really do too much knob churning mid set? Uh, it, dep it depends what's going on, really. Sometimes I'll, you know, fiddle with a delay feedback and time thing to make a weird noise or whatever, and yeah. you know, some oh you know, play around with some of those expression things, kind of ad hoc, as well like kind of with a bit of wah and stuff like that. Mostly things are fairly in preset mode, that's what's going on there. Um, but you know, the big fun at the end of the show is getting to put all of them on at the same time, which I is, you know. I imagine that might be Peach or Moaning uh, Lisa Smile. Uh, this will go out after the tour, so what we've, we're actually finishing on Don't Do The Kisses at the moment. Oh. Yeah, 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 but I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to get some noise in at the end, even, <laughs> even still. Yeah, one yeah, of your yeah. more uh, beautiful. Pro probably songs. not appropriate, but you know. Yeah, well, it's rock and roll. Jeff, uh, thank you so much for uh, walking us through your sounds, showing us what you have at the pedal board, or at least just like the crust of what you have to work with in terms of the pie. Uh, the guitars, everything sounded great. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Congrats and everything, and uh, maybe we'll see more of your creations in the future. Hopefully so. Cheers. Right. Everyone out there, stay safe. <laughs>